cerebral palsy physiotherapy treatment there are many systems of treatment in cerebral palsy and some of the most well known approaches will be reviewed muscle education and bracing dr w n phelps an orthopedic surgeon in baltimore usa encourages physiotherapists occupational therapists and speech therapists to form themselves into teams to treat cerebral palsy children the main points of this treatment program were as follows a specific diagnostic classification of the cerebral palsy child was the basis for specific treatment techniques this included five types of cerebral palsy and many sub classifications a list of 15 modalities or methods were taught to the therapist these consist consisted of massage passive motion active assisted motion active motion resisted motion rest conditioned motion confused motion combined motion balance reach and grasp skills relaxation movement from relaxation and reciprocation braces or calipers were specially designed and developed by phelps he prescribed braces to correct deformity and braces to control atherosclerosis equipment for daily living many aids for dressing washing and feeding and for sitting and locomotion were de- developed muscle education for spastics and training in joint control for arthritis was the emphasis of the largely orthopedic view of cerebral palsy motor development was seldom discussed as a foundation for therapy muscle education for spastics was also developed in specific ways by a num- by a number of other cerebral palsy authorities such as paul in america plum in denmark and many orthopedic therapists and doctors in britain although many people today dismiss phelps approach there is much of interest which can still be used for these patients braces calipers are needed by some children although they need not to be as extensive or used for as many years as phelps recommended muscle education is necessary before and after orthopedic surgery many of the aids devised at phelps clinic form the basis of occupational therapy today in therdios work in paris there is not only neurological assessment but also detailed factorial analysis of muscles in spastic to explain the abnormal movements and deformities he recommends bracing some muscle education alcohol injections into the motor point of a particular spastic muscle orthopedic surgery and developing development tell training progressive pattern movements the main points of this approach devised by temple fay 1954 are the recommendation that the cerebral palsy be taught motion according to its developmental a development in evolution fay regards motor development as evolving from reptilian skirming to amphibian movements through mammalian reciprocal motion on all fours to the advanced skill of walking he argues that as early movements of progression are carried out by lower animals with the simple nervous system they can similarly be carried out in the human in the absence of a normal cerebral cortex the primitive patterns of movement and reflexes can be stimulated in the handicapped parts of the body through the spine medulla pons and midbrain face pattern movements are based on these ideas the author was found the pattern movements has found the pattern movements useful for coordination reciprocal motion concentration and rhythm the movement patterns begin with prone lying head and trunk rotation or primitive squirming followed by a primitive creeping with a homolateral pattern of the arm and leg on the same side then a contralateral part pattern of arm and leg on the opposite sides after creeping the child is trained to crawl on hands and knees and then elephant walk on hands and feet and finally the walking pattern of man a strict sequence of this phylogenetic develop- development is stressed the creeping movements are taught with passive motion or patterning by adults the child is much later encouraged to carry this out alone no braces and no aids are used 
reflex movements or unlocking reflexes are used to relax spasticity that is reflex withdrawal of hip and knee into flexion abduction to unlock adductor extensor spasticity proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation cabet disagrees with the training of isolated muscles or isolated joint motion which he says are almost never used as such in voluntary activities the main points in this approach which have been developed by margaret not dorothy was and others are movement patterns rather than muscle education of individual muscle groups are recommended however the movement patterns taught should be those used by man in such functioning as rolling over and getting up locomotion and various daily skills using the upper limb the diagonal and rotatory aspects of movement patterns were observed by kabat every movement pattern used in the therapeutic techniques has a diagonal direction internal external rotation and flexion extension and abduction adduction are the elements of the patterns sensory afferent stimuli were shown to stimulate motion proprioception is emphasized although the techniques include touch auditory and visual stimuli as well as the stimuli from stretch pressure and muscle contraction resistance is used to facilitate stronger muscle action within the synergistic pattern of movement various methods are used to adjust the degree of resistance it is also important to know where to apply resistance to get a local effect or an effect in another part of the body associated with the movement pattern ice treatment are used to relax or inhibit hypotonus relaxation techniques of a special kind are also included for selected cases these methods are useful in many cerebral palsy children they are particularly good for weakness in any condition and can be used to train motor skills although not mentioned by most authorities writing about proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation the author has found that modification should be made when treating the various types of cerebral palsy neuromotor development irene colles was a british pioneer of cerebral palsy treatment she stressed neuromotor development as a basis for treatment her developmental milestones were dogmatically presented she also considered it important to plan the whole day of the child and not rely solely on short physiotherapy sessions colles suggested that there should be cerebral palsy therapists rather than separate professions of physiotherapists occupational therapists and speech therapists she thought this would help the child to have a more successful total therapeutic day and also counteract the isolation of the different professional disciplines neurodevelopmental treatment with reflex inhibition and facilitation dr carol bobat a neuropsychiatrist and ms berta bobat a physiotherapist base assessment and treatment on the premise that the fund that the fundamental difficulty of cerebral palsy is lack of inhibition of reflex patterns of posture and movement the bobats associate these abnormal patterns with abnormal tone due to overaction of tonic reflex activity these tonic reflexes and asymmetrical tonic neck reflexes have to be inhibited once the normal tone and reflex patterns have been inhibited there should be facilitation of more mature postural reflexes all this is carried out in a developmental context the main features of their work are reflex inhibitory patterns specifically selected to inhibit abnormal tone associated with abnormal movement patterns and abnormal posture sensory motor experience the reversal or breakdown of these abnormalities gives the child the sensation of more normal tone and movements this sensory experience is believed to feedback and guide more normal motion sensory stimuli are also used for inhibition and facilitation and voluntary movement facilitation techniques for mature postural reflexes key points of control 
the inhibition of abnormal postures and movements in reflex inhibiting patterns and the facilitation of more desirable patterns are carried out by correct manual handling of the child by skillful use of key points of control and by various sensory stimuli developmental sequence is followed and adapted to each child all day management should supplement treatment sessions parents and others are advised on daily management and trained to treat the children finay a rather simplified example of the features of this approach may be applied to a spastic child who excessively extend extended in spine this extensive spasticity is considered to be due to the tonic labyrinthine reflex in order to inhibit the spasticity of one reflex inhibitory pattern might be to flex the child's head and shoulders and hips and knees manually or in a hammock for everyday management the flexion may be carried out actively the key points of control might be that if the head is held flexed the legs may be able to flex actively or if the hips are held in flexion as a key point of control then the child may be able to actively flex his head to look at his knees flexion of his head off the couch is also part of the more mature postural reaction of head writing in supine this head writing is facilitated while there is a reflex inhibitory pattern to inhibit the extensive spasticity the developmental sequence is involved in that a reflex inhibitory pattern may be sitting with hip and knee flexion rather than the earlier level of supine lying with the hip and knee flexion in facilitating the head writing in supine this would be possible if the child is approximately at about the 6 6 months normal developmental level when this postural reaction is expected once again in, in the all day management the child may be carried correctly in a flex position placed in chairs which are designed to flex his hips and knees and have his shoulders flexed forward instead of retracted into extension play activities are given to motivate flexion of the child's developmental level every child is individual and the above example does not apply to every child with extensive spasticity but is only an example to clarify some of the features of this approach sensory stimulation for activation and inhibition margaret rood a physiotherapist and occupational therapist bases her approach on many neurophysiological theories and the literature the main features of her approach are afferent stimuli the various nerves and sensory receptors are described and classified into location effect response distribution and indication techniques of stimulation example stroking pressure brushing icing heating bone pounding slow and quick muscle stretch joint retraction and approximation muscle contractions muscle pressure are used to activate facilitate or inhibit motor response muscles are classified according to various physiological data including whether they are for light work muscle action or heavy work muscle action the appropriate stimuli for their action are suggested reflexes other than the above are used in therapy example tonic labyrinthine reflexes tonic neck vestibular reflexes withdrawal patterns the ontogenic development sequence is outlined and strictly followed in the application of stimuli total flexion or withdrawal pattern in supine roll over flexion of arm and leg on the same side and roll over pivot prone prone with extension of head trunk and legs co contraction neck prone head over edge of contraction of vertebral muscles on elbows prone and push backwards all fours static weight shift and crawl standing upright static weight shifts walking stands push off pick up heel strike 
vital functions a developmental sequence of respiration sucking swallowing phonation chewing and speech is followed techniques of brushing icing and pressures are used reflex creeping and other reflex reactions dr veslav vojta a neurologist working in selsvokia developed an approach based on the work of temple fay kabat and his own ideas the main features are reflex creeping the creeping patterns involved head trunk and limbs are facilitated at various trigger points or reflex zones the creeping is an active response to the appropriate triggering from the zones with sensory stimuli the muscle work used in the normal creeping patterns or creeping complex have been carefully analyzed the therapist must be skillful in the facilitation of these normal patterns and not provoke pathological patterns sensory stimulation touch pressure stretch and muscle action against resistance are used in many of the triggering mechanisms or in the facilitation of creeping resistance is recommendation for action of muscles various specific techniques are used to apply the resistance so that either a tonic or phasic muscle action is provoked the phasic action may be provoked on a movement of a limb creeping up or downwards the tonic action or stabilizing action is obtained if a phasic movement is fully resisted therefore the static muscle action of stability occurs if resistance is applied so that it prevents any movement through the range conductive education professor andras peto in budapest hungary originated conductive education since professor peto's death his work has been continued by dr m harry the main features are integration of therapy and education by a conductor acting as mother nurse teacher and therapist she is specific especially trained in the hab- habilitation of motor disabled children in a four year course she may have one or two assistants the group of children about 15 to 20 work together groups are fundamental in this training system an all day program a timetable is planned to include getting out of bed in the morning dressing feeding toileting movement training speech reading writing and other school work the movements there are sessions of movements mainly taking place on and beside slatted plinths table or beds and with ladder backed chairs the movements are devised in such a way that they form the elements of a task or motor skill the tasks are carefully analyzed for each group of children the tasks are the activities of daily living hand skills including hand function balance and locomotion the purpose of each movement is explained to the children the movements are repeated not only in the movement session of say the hand class or plinth work but also in various contexts throughout the day the children are shown in practice how their exercises contribute to daily activities rhythmic intention the technique used for training the elements or movements is rhythmic intention the conductor and the children state the intended motion i touch my mouth with my hands this motion is then attempted together with the slow rhythmic counts of 1 to 5 motion is also carried out to an operative word such as up 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 repeated in a rhythm slow enough for the active movement speech and active motion reinforce each other individual sessions may be used for some children to help them to participate more adequately in the work of the group learning principles are basic to the program conditioning techniques and group dynamics are among the mechanisms of training discussed cortical or conscious participation is stressed as opposed to involuntary and automatic unconscious reflex therapy the eclectic viewpoint it is difficult to prove which treatment approach is superior to the other all claim good results and to date no approach can be scientifically proved 
superior by a controlled study. There are many variables such as intelligence, home background, personality of the child and of the therapist as well as different associated handicaps which could affect the result of physiotherapy. Untreated controls are difficult to obtain and it is also difficult to match the treated children in the study. Theoretical considerations are controversial and none of the approaches have the complete answer to the understanding of the cerebral palsies. The lack of a complete answer is not surprising as neither what is happening in the brain of the cerebral palsy nor the effect of therapy on the neurological and psychological mechanisms is fully understood as yet. From practical experience, many physiotherapists find that each child is so individual in his clinical picture and needs that it is difficult to confine all the children to any one set of techniques or approach. The facilities for treatment will also affect what techniques can be used. In order to draw on various schools of thought and treatment systems, it may be helpful to use the following general principles. These are the common factors the authors has found after a study of many different systems of treatment. Motor development. Follow the normal motor developmental sequence, gross and fine motor, and modify them according to each child. A detailed developmental assessment of each child is essential for treatment. The motor skills at each developmental level such as head control, rolling, creeping, crawling, sitting, standing, walking and hand function should be facilitated with techniques from any treatment system. A physiotherapist may invent her own methods to obtain these motor activities and she must work particularly closely with the occupational therapist. Spastic quadriplegia with visual handicap unable to control head and trunk at developmental levels of an infant. Further carrying out the home program to develop head and trunk control for sitting. Note improvement of arm and leg postures through though head asymmetric asymmetry persists. Afferent stimuli. Various techniques are used with afferent stimuli to obtain desirable activity and decrease hypertonus. Prevention of deformity. Any methods to stimulate a variety of corrective movements should be used. Splintage, bracing, correct furniture, footwear and frequent changes of posture are important in the prevention of deformity. Orthopedic procedures use, using plaster of Paris or surgery may be indicated in selected cases. Inhibition and facilitation. Inhibition of hypertonus can be obtained as a result of facilitation, active corrective movements and postures. These activities are best carried out within the function of context of the motor skills of child development. Correct training of say hand function, head control, rolling over, creeping, crawling, sitting, standing and walking will at the same time inhibit hypertonus and involuntary movement. However, special techniques of inhibition of hypertonus may also be needed in some children. Both facilitation and inhibition techniques are available from many different approaches. Motivation techniques. Motivation techniques with songs, toys, adventure playgrounds, play equipment, group games, group exercises, play groups, music and horse riding can be subtly arranged to obtain active corrective movements, posture and equilibrium. Movement patterns and muscle work. Most modern systems train movement patterns rather than muscle education. However, specific muscle groups may be particularly weak or spastic or both and need concentrated therapy. There may be treated, they may be treated in isolation or in pattern depending on the child. Teamwork and all day care. It is not enough to see the treatment of the child as only a half an hour session in a day. The physiotherapist should check that her aims of treatment are not hampered by incorrect management throughout the day. She must check the furniture used by the child, his toys, the way he is carried, his feeding, washing, toileting, 
and any other activities involving posture and movement. She will have to advise parents, teachers, other therapists, house mothers and anyone handling the child as to what postures and movements to avoid and what to encourage. In order to understand the child as a whole and to treat him in a total habilitation program, it is obvious that the therapist must function as a part of a team of cerebral palsy workers. It is easier if the personnel handling the child are all working in the same building to that contact can be maintained so that contact can be maintained staff conferences are useful but informal discussions in the staff room are as important for teamwork it is essential to explore the different ways in which various professions overlap for the sake of total habilitation of the child it is Unrealistic for each professional person of a cerebral palsy team to isolate herself in her own department. The overlapping of therapies and education does not mean that there is still not a need for the benefits of the specialized knowledge and training. Clearly, the parents must be part of this teamwork where cerebral palsy teams do not exist. Parent participation is the only way a child can be treated. Increase general sensory motor experience. The physiotherapist should make sure that in giving the child postures and movements and added independence, he uses these achievements to explore space, textures, shapes, temperatures and other everyday experiences. If he is learning to crawl or walk, he should try not only on the floor of the physiotherapy room but on grass rough ground, in sand, on inclines and so on. He should get into boxes, cupboards, under tables, go into different rooms in his house and so on. Any visits to shops, the country and the zoo must be encouraged. Early treatment. The advantages of early treatment are that not only is motion stimulated but is but it is stimulated in the best possible patterns. An intelligent baby can be motivated to move by an enterprising mother. However, he will move in the way which comes uh, easiest to him. In other words, the abnormal patterns of movement will be used. If there is a potential for more normal patterns in the baby's nervous system, correct early physiotherapy can facilitate this and prevent prevent the abnormal patterns from being established as habitual. If abnormal patterns are used, this can lead to deformities and later contractures. Learning process Physiotherapy systems are preoccupied with orthopedic and neurophysiological techniques. However, this is not the only way child learns to move while working within Multidisciplinary teams, physiotherapists should obtain information and be guided by educationalists and psychologists. The physiotherapist should also study principles of learning movement from the field of education, human movement studies, child development and psychology. Techniques of treatment. It is not possible to describe these in chapter. The physiotherapist must attend courses, gain clinical experience, study the literature and carry out study visits in order to learn how to treat cerebral palsy. She must collect a reporter of methods and understand the purpose of each method she decides to use. The methods must be relevant to each child's problem. In selecting techniques for each child, the physiotherapist naturally selects the technique which she can carry out skillfully. Some techniques require more supervision and training than others. In, in selecting techniques, it is important to focus on the stimulation of motor function in daily life and the correction of the way in which they are performed. Techniques are therefore on three related aspects. Techniques only used by specially trained pediatric physiotherapists. Techniques which can be shown to parents, nurses, playgroup, workers, teachers and other stimulating movement 
or caring for cerebral palsy children selection of equipment to reinforce techniques or to be used with techniques of movement training